Hey there guys, this is Jimmy from Spin Retro, and today we have RG351B. It's uh, finally here. I've already opened the box because I couldn't wait. This came today around the noon time, and I couldn't wait till now to open it. But before we begin, I'd like to um, show you my secret recipe to make a perfect coffee. So here we have Maxim Coffee Mix. It's a Korean one that you can get from local H Mart. Let's add these two suckers in. All right, perfect. About that much milk, just about that. Stir it. Uh, tastes just like Hagen Dazs ice cream melted. Mmm, mmm, so good. So here we are, RG351V. Sorry, it's not a authentic unboxing experience because I've opened this already. Voila. So at first impression, this looked pretty big. Uh, I didn't think that it would be uh, this big because I'm so used to seeing RG280V, which is not with me here right now, unfortunately. But let's, uh, let's see what's in the box. So we have a USB-C charging cable and we have a screen protector. And then a manual, getting started guide, detailed information, specification. There, let me just apply this to see how it looks like. I'll be right back. Wipe it once with the wet towel. I mean wet wipes, and then use a dry wipe to get rid of all the dust. This is gonna be the back side, which is, which the sticker is in. So I'm gonna peel off the sticker. There, I made the application. This uh, protective screen is very tight fit. So you gotta be really careful when applying this. I really like the way it, um, the screen is you know, coming out a little bit with, with the protective glass. It's kind of similar to Retroid Pocket 2. And also the RG280V. I'm usually good at this, but this it's it is pretty difficult. There's really no room for error. So let's see here. Uh, we have a D-pad, standard D-pad with four face buttons. Select and start. This is a. It says F on it. This acts like an R3 left joystick with the L3 button clickable. We have a mono speaker on the bottom. We have. We have an OTG USB Type-C cable port, and then we have a charging port, which is uh, also USB-C type. And then we have an audio jack. And then on the left, we have a two TF card slot. One is used for the OS and all the BIOS files used by RetroArch. And, and there's a second slot for games. Okay, to the left, there is volume volume buttons, minus plus, and then at the top there's nothing. To the right side there's a power button and a reset button, which is not easy to press. Well, I don't think it's possible to press with a finger like mine. Using my nail and doesn't press it. This is slightly different from RG350P that I have, this reset button is pretty uh, hard to press, but it's it's not impossible. You can use your finger to press it. Oops, I accidentally turned it on. And then we have, of course, uh, L, L1, uh, sorry, L1, R1, L2, R2, the shoulder buttons. And this feels, this feels pretty good. It's a little awkward to, to keep your fingers on L1 and R1 because you have to hold the device in this manner, right? If in order to you know play like this, my fingers are covering you know all the way here, and it's not easy to press you know L1 and R R1. And your finger sits you know and rests on you know L2 and R2 instead, so you cannot grip the device this way. Um, you have to hold it like this, which is a little uncomfortable, but it's not too bad. And also, of course, I uh, cannot not mention about the wood grain. This wood grain is, it, it looks really good um, in person. It really does look like wood, um, even though it's plastic. You know, everywhere you, you look, every corner you look, it's really well made. And then you have a mono speaker. I didn't mention that earlier. 
So let's turn on the device. So we'll quickly take a look at the spec here. Um, Built-in Wi-Fi online sparring. Um, that just means that this device has a Wi-Fi module and you can use RetroArch to uh, play uh, Wi-Fi uh, with another device, uh, with another RetroArch. This is rocking uh, RK3326 quad-core, 1.5 gigahertz, GPU Mali, G31, MP2. It's using one gigabyte DDRL, it uses 3.5 inches, and the resolution on this is 640 by 480, which is new uh, in RG351 devices. The other 351 devices, 351P and 351M, they are both uh, three by two screen ratio, and this is three by four which is better for playing retro games. The battery is 3,900 milliamp and lasts for six hours, which is pretty big. And like I mentioned before, this support two TF cards and it does say expendable to 256 gigabytes. So basically you can have 256 and 256, but I don't think you need more than 256. So let's take a look at uh, the systems that this device supports. Now this is using a stock firmware emulation station and then it's using RetroArch as backend and it also runs PPSPP emulator and Nintendo DS emulator and OpenBore emulator. So let's just go one by one. So we have Nintendo DS, Final Burn Neo, Meme, Wonderswan Color, Capcom 1, Capcom 2, Capcom 3, MSX, PC Engine, Nintendo, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Open Bore, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, Game Gear, Mega Drive, Dreamcast, and Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, PlayStation 1, PlayStation Portable, and that's it. And like I said, this is using Emulation Station for the stock firmware. I'm not too familiar with this uh, OS, so um, I'll have to tinker a little bit to give you guys more information about this. But at glance, it's very configurable and very easy to use. And you can connect Wi-Fi and it looks like you can scrape box arts. And also you can change the themes and download themes and apply themes and all good, that good stuff. And you can also change the language interface to these languages that you see on screen. So as you can see, there is a lot of language supports. We'll get to this in a later video, but this is just a quick first impression video. So let's try running Nintendo DS. This is a little bit not really recommended to play a Nintendo DS game on this. So you have this stick. I'm not too familiar with this emulator. You can change the screen type and change screens with L2 and R2 can change the layout type. Yeah, it's a little choppy. Um, might have to tinker around and maybe um, maybe a different firmware would run run this better. So okay, so we're gonna skip Nintendo DS. I might I might have to come back to this. Um, but let's. Uh, Try Final Burn Neo. And I'll do more of these emulation tests in a separate video. I'll just pick one or two games per system so you, get, you guys can have a general idea of how this runs. So while you're in this, while you're in this game, um, if you're running RetroArch emulator, you can access the quick menu by pressing L1, L3 and R3 and you can enter the quick menu of RetroArch and you can go uh, whatever you want to change for RetroArch and you can also do save and load state. Um, there is hotkey that is already mapped so by pressing R3 and pressing down R1 you can do save state and you can also press down this R3 button. Let's just call it call this a function key. So function key with L1, you can load load uh, the state. So this is this is configurable. You can map it to other keys if you want. So you can also fast forward and rewind because this is running RetroArch. Okay, so this was uh, Final Burn Alpha. Let's try a different game. So to access the quick menu, press 
L3 and the function key, which is R3. And to quit out of uh, the emulator, you have to select quit retroarch. Then now you're back to this screen. So this is Raiden 2 for Final Burn Neo. There is some audio glitch, as you can hear. Let's move on to main. Be able to expect similar performance as RG351P or M. So this is Street Fighter 2, the World Warrior. The screen looks very vibrant. The color is great, you know, in, at every angle. The buttons, the D-pad, the analogs uh, play all great. Um, it looks looks good. So let's move on to the next game. So this is Dragon Ball on Wonderswan. Just pick the random game. I'm not too familiar with Wonderswan. And also it's uh, it's a Japanese ROM, so I won't be able to read it. I believe there's a Famicom version of this. It's running great. The screen looks really good. Uh, now I feel like you know compared to RG two eighty V, you know that that device felt very compact. This device is not. This is you know much bigger than Red Trade Pocket two, thicker in that dimension. I mean, if you look at this this side, it's thinner, but you know overall dimension, you know this feels very very big. And screen just looks, you know, I think for me, perfect size. You know, it's the same size as uh, RG350P, but it feels like it's bigger. It's a quick side compar uh, size comparison. Now this, uh, I try to fit this in my pocket and it does. It does fit, but you really gotta try and you have to have a big pocket. You know, it definitely will fit into the jacket pocket, but if you have a tight jean, uh, it's not gonna fit. It's definitely not a wallet size. So that was Battle Circuit for Capcom 1. Try a little bit more demanding one. Let's choose Iron Man. Try Street Fighter 3, the third strike. CPS 3 game running smoothly. Very nice. Compared to the low resolution uh, screens in previous model, RG350P, you know, that, that uh, screen is good too, but you know, this screen is amazing. Like, you can't really. You can't really see the pixel. It feels like a phone screen, if you know what I mean. To the next system, 
There is a lot of system here. Uh, now we're playing Circus Charlie. And I played this on Famicom. I actually got pretty far on Famicom. Oh no! Oh uh, yeah. Alright, but you get the idea. It runs. It runs well. Okay, now PC engine. on to Nintendo for Mario Bros. Uh, the color looks amazing. I think it's super accurate. Oops. Oh my gosh. You know, I purpose purposely died there, so we can move on. Uh, and then we have Game Boy. So I tweaked Game Boy a little bit to to get to this uh, green tint, and I'll show you how to do that. So if you go to Options and go to GB Colorization, set that to Internal, and then set Internal Palette to GB DMG, and you'll have this color. And of course, you can change it back and set that to off and you'll back to normal. And you just have to restart the ROM. So now you have um, everything white and black. You know, whatever you prefer. And let's do Super Nintendo. Okay. Oops. No. Ah. Uh. Turn on the first person, sorry, not the first person, FPS counter. I'm pressing down the function key with L2 and it's a fast forward. Game's still a little choppy, but it's uh, it's bearable. And now we're launching Pokemon Yellow. So I'm gonna skip Game Boy Color because we we can see that it's running well. Let me try Game Boy Advance. And now because this is running at 4x3 screen ratio, Game Boy Advance is not going to be pixel perfect. So it's going to be looking a little squashed, but I think that's fine. So it runs pretty smoothly. And this is Aladdin from Sega Genesis Mega Drive. Oh wait, this is not Sega Genesis Mega Drive. This is... Seems like... Master System? The color looks great, runs great. 
move on. So this is not Genesis. This is this is something else. It's Game Gear. So that must be Master System. This must be a uh, Mega Drive. Let's fast forward the intro. So Mega Drive runs great and now uh, we were moving on to Dreamcast emulation and we're running so Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, it's very choppy. Audio is choppy. Let's try... Neo Geo uh, Run great. Let's move on to the next game. Now, if you guys have any requests, uh, let me know down in the comments below and let me know which games you want me to test. Uh, we're gonna sp skip Neo Geo Pocket because we can see that Neo Geo is running well. Let's try PlayStation. The PlayStation 1 is going to be running perfectly fine on this, no doubt. Try another PlayStation 1. And as you can see, you can put the ROMs in the folder. Oh no. Oh God. No! So this device is a fun little device. Um, I think it's best to play PlayStation 1 and arcade games. CPS, CPS 2, CPS 3, and Neo Geo. All those arcade games, meme games. Okay are going to run really well on this. Um, of course, not the demanding ones. Uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color will also play great. Game Boy Advance also will play great, but it's not going to be, you know, pixel perfect. It's going to be a little squashed, but I think it'll run really well. A Mega Drive and SNES will also look really great on this screen ratio. So if you like RG351P, device but you wanted something in a 4x3 ratio this is this is good this is perfect and also the resolution is a huge upgrade uh, 640 by 480 a screen is looking really sharp you're not going to see the individual pixels and also the screen size is, is big enough 3.5 looks pretty big the sound is great the overall device quality is great so i really recommend this if you are looking to pick up a, a retro handheld Let's try. You got a piece of that one. And the keeper decides to come on this line for the ball. So as you can see, it's it's okay. It it doesn't run perfectly. It runs at 30 frames per second. Uh, right, yeah, right there. Uh, screen is flickering. Might have to um, tinker with this a little bit more. So this is running PPSPP emulator. We can just navigate within the system. Try uh, GTA Vice City Stories.
So this, as you can see, it's uh, it's playable, uh, but it's a little choppy. Uh, did I just casually run over somebody? You might be able to run, you know, less intensive games or like 2D games, you'll be fine. And also note that uh, the screen is stretched to 4x3. And it doesn't look that bad. I actually, you know, prefer playing this way. Um, instead of playing 16x9, I don't mind playing it squashed like this. So that I don't see the pillar boxes. Castlevania is running okay. Um, it has occasional slowdowns, but for the most part, it's running at 30 frames per second. It's okay. So there are gonna be games that you can play on this uh, PlayStation portable games that you can play on this device. So we we covered all the systems. I I did skip like one or two systems. But you get the idea, um, this is a pretty powerful machine. Um, fortunately, can't run DS games that well. Uh, maybe I need to tinker with it, or maybe it needs a firmware update. PSP also, it's uh, either hit or miss. You'll be okay running 2D games, but most 3D games, demanding games, won't be running. Um, this is a pretty you know, easy pick up and play. You might have to learn how to use RetroArch, but I'm, I'll have uh, uh, video guides on that um, coming up so you guys don't have to uh, figure out on your own. So if you guys like this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more contents like this one. Let me know if you guys have any specific games that you want me to test. Overall, I really like this device. I like the fact that I can take out the SD card and put the games in and put it in here. So if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll give you guys more in-depth uh, review later on. I really like this device. The wood grain is not so bad. I initially thought it was a terrible idea but seeing this in person, I really like it. It's, it's actually looking really good. This does have a sleep mode so there you go. Alright so that's it for today and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!